Okay, so so I, I completely accept the, the critique that, Tony, you're an asshole, why didn't you just start with that? Um, so the reason was, I, I wanted to see kind of, let's take our intuition and let's just try to add on that plus dt squared, the same way that like, you know, um, that um, Euclid might try to do for the, you know, dx squared plus dy squared. Um, turns out though, there is no answer. So let's try something else. Let's just turn that last at a plus c squared dt squared into a negative. And as it turns out, this is exactly the key for doing this properly. And the way it works out is, like I said, kind of fun. So let's go ahead and let's, let's try the analysis. And again, I'm going to take our basic Lorentz transformations. Just exactly as we've written up before. And I'm going to turn those into infinitesimal quantities. So if you're making a slight change in x or x prime, we have these. And now at this point, I'm going to do exactly what we did before. So everything, all that work we did previously in, for example, squaring this, squaring that, will come out to be, you know, the same results. So again, I'm going to try to do this in the prime frame. Okay, so I, I've kind of rewritten right there, and just to make it clear that I'm only really going to focus on the x prime and the t prime, uh, we know that the y and the z parts will translate directly. So let's go ahead and just look at these two parts again. And um, by doing the cross terms and whatnot, uh, we have dx prime squared equals gamma squared times dx squared plus v squared dt squared minus, and same thing, yeah, dt prime, okay, so there's our two differentials squared, and now one more thing that I want to do here, I want to make sure that we're adding in c squared to it, so, um, and I'd forgotten that too, so again, a lot of uh, relative, uh, uh, people who do relativity, um, relativists, uh, will kind of, we ignore that C because we always read it to be one, meaning one light year per year or, or whatever. If we use proper set of units, C just, it, it doesn't matter because it's not needed. But I'm going to keep it in there anyway. So we have C squared dt prime squared, and I'm going to just add it out front. Okay, so first of all, um, this should have been a negative there, uh, minus C squared dt squared. But in order to calculate this, I'm going to use the whole blackboard here. So Let's go ahead and just kind of separate that. I'm going to try to take dx prime squared minus c squared dt prime squared. And, you know, if you have a much a bigger board, this will take the entire line. It's going to be a long string of terms. This will equal. Now, everything will be in front of a gamma squared. Our gamma squared will be in front of everything. So, I'm going to take my dx squared plus when I pull the c squared out in front of everything, dx squared and then v squared over c squared, dx squared, and this is going to be subtracted. So dx squared is going to have a factor of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now I'm going to check that term off. I'm going to check that term off. Plus dt squared. Uh, let me write it here. Plus dt squared times we have a v squared. Now we're subtracting here. We have a v squared minus c squared. So I'll check off that term, I'll check off that term, and now I just have the cross terms here. Plus, and actually, uh, well yeah, we'll do uh, minus 2v dx dt, and that's going to be times 1, that's this term, minus, so this actually becomes plus here, but minus 1 over c squared. Nope, actually, the c squared canceled that out front. 
So we have 2v dx dt minus c squared, which cancels out 2v dx dt. So if you do that properly, and, and that is important there, if you do it properly, this entire term falls out because this multiplied by c squared cancels that. So that's good. The cross terms don't come in, don't come in, and that's really important because you wouldn't expect there would be any cross terms involving both differentials in the x and the y. That'd be a nonlinear theory, which nonlinear theories tend to not be what the universe wants to use for anything. Okay, let's let's combine our all of our results here into one big long sentence. So, okay. By the way, I kind of raised the left hand side, but remember everything here was dx prime squared minus c squared dt prime squared, and it equaled this here. We don't need to worry about that cross term. Okay. And so let's write this up properly here. We now have dx prime squared plus d, and, and I'll, I'll add those in later actually, dx prime squared minus c squared dt prime squared plus dy prime squared plus dz prime squared. So I do want to kind of keep track of this. Now, we've already found, that, found what that is. This, the right-hand side, is exactly what these first two terms equal. And I'm going to do just one more thing when I write them up there. For the second term, I'm going to pull out the c squared. So, in other words, this is gamma squared times dx squared 1 minus uh, v squared over c squared plus dt squared. Now I said I'm going to pull out a c, a c squared, c squared. And what that means is now I need to divide that v squared over c squared. And I've already pulled that out, 1. Just put that in normal parentheses. If you don't see how I got that, go back through it step for step, because I guarantee this is what that equals. And then, by the way, there's still, those just translate exactly, plus dy squared plus dz squared. So we've taken everything into account here. And let's see, I'm, I'm going to add those last two terms over here, plus dy squared plus dz squared. Okay. So a couple things. I can rewrite this as dx squared. Now, what is 1 minus v squared over c squared? That's the same thing as 1 minus beta squared. And that looks really familiar. I'm just going to get rid of that all together. We'll add those back in when we need. Now, remember, gamma is 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta squared. So gamma squared is 1 over 1 minus beta squared. So 1 minus beta squared is 1 over gamma squared. Do you see where that works out? So I have this thing here, which is exactly what I just calculated. And notice here we had the gamma squared up front. That's exactly going to be canceled by that. And then the next thing I'm going to do for the dt uh, term, I'm going to change this to a negative, and I'm going to ab absorb that sign in there. So I hope you see why I did that. So I now have minus c squared dt squared times. So flipping this around, that becomes 1 minus v squared over c squared, which I think you see exactly where this goes now. That's 1 minus beta squared. And again, that's 1 over gamma squared. So we have minus c squared dt squared times 1 over gamma squared. And then, like I said, I was going to remember that plus dy squared plus dz squared. So let's, let's look at this now. We have gamma squared canceling gamma squared and gamma squared. In other words, this becomes dx squared minus c squared dt squared 
plus dy squared and dz squared. Or specifically what I'm going to write now. Uh, and I am going to use the right hand side. What we have here, what we started with was ds prime squared. And we calculated that by taking dx prime squared plus minus. So this is what we originally calculated. So everything had a prime to begin with. And using our differential Lorentz transformations, we converted each of these terms into something that did not have a prime. And specifically, this is our result here. So everything there had a prime by doing those conversions or, or the, the uh, sorry, the, yeah, the Lorentz conversions. This became something that looked like dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared minus c squared dt squared. Now again, nothing here had a prime and I've just rever reversed the order of that. So at this point, we can now identify this to be simply ds squared whatever that quantity is in the s prime instead of the s prime frame. So what we've done is we have just proven that if you have two separate frames connected by a Lorentz transformation, they may not agree on direct lengths. They may not agree on exact times. But when you add up the lengths and spatial variables exactly in this manner, we call it using this metric, we're immediately led to the fact that this quantity that we just calculated will be invariant. All observers will agree on it, even though the individual terms uh, differ. So this ds squared is invariant under Lorentz transformations. And now because all observers will agree on that, this becomes one of the single most fundamental uh, constructs in all of relativity. This is what we call the space-time interval between two events. And specifically, when you have finite distances now, you simply just replace that with delta. So delta s squared equals delta x squared plus and so on. And this becomes a really important, basically, object to analyze motion, because no matter who you are and what, you know, what variables you're using, when you add them up according to this metric, all observers will see the same thing. And so we're going to get into looking at different types of motion. So space-like motion, or time-like motion, or light-like motion. And each of those will have a uniquely different delta s squared. Each of those will have a uniquely different sign, specifically, of our space-time uh, interval. All right, so that should be enough here. I, I hope that makes sense, and we will absolutely come back to this and look at it more for later uh, purposes.